James Stewart as the six shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long legged. His skin is sun dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl, its handle unmarked. People call them both the six shooter. The NBC Radio Network presents James Stewart as The Six Shooter, a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still-remembered legends. Now, in just a moment, immediately following this important announcement, you'll hear Act One of The Six Shooter. Meet the safe driver. If you know what makes him stay alive on the highways, you may be able to follow his good example. He always keeps his car in A1 mechanical condition. He shows courtesy for other drivers. He knows that speed is his greatest enemy. And most important, he knows and obeys the laws. Remember, few accidents happen with safe drivers. Are you one of them? Now, Act One. Of the Six Shooter, starring James Stewart. I sure couldn't figure it. I'd ridden down the whole main street all the way from Seth Tooley's bank to Ma Benson's rooming house, and I hadn't seen a single solitary person. The stores were closed, shut tight. There wasn't even a wagon or a horse out in front of them. It looked like the town of Elk Point had just up and gone to sleep, but that didn't make sense either. Not at five o'clock in the afternoon. Whoa, Scott. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ma Benson didn't know what the trouble was. She always had a pretty good notion about everything that went on in Jackson County. You know, folks always used to say that's why the Elk Point Gazette kept going broke. You know, old Sadie Benson was too much competition. <laughs> who, who is it? Brett Ponson. Brett? Yeah. How do I know it's you? Well, opening the door might be one way of finding out. <laughs> it does sound like you're all right. But if it ain't, I'm just a poor widow woman without a cent of a name. I don't think you're going oh, to Oh, come on now. Come on, Ma. Open up the door. Oh, Britt, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Well, don't just stand there. Get inside quick so I can lock up again. Oh, sure, sure. All right. You can't imagine what a fright you gave me when I heard you knocking out there. Oh, but I must say there ain't anybody I'd rather see today. Well, now, that's a very flattering greeting, Ma. But what's, uh, what's behind that? Oh, now, stop joshing me, Britt. At a time like this when we all might be murdered any minute. Murdered? Stacy Galt is headed this way. Don't tell me you didn't know. Galt? That's what I said. Stacy Galt. Stacy Galt. Oh, I hadn't heard he was in these parts. You're... You hadn't heard? No. Then what on earth brought you to Elk Point? Oh, I was just passing through on my way to White River. I thought I might stop off long enough to have one of those fine home-cooked meals of yours. Isn't that reason enough? Well, you're heaven sent, Britt Ponce, if that's what you are. Oh. Heaven sent. Come on out in the kitchen with me while I give you the news. Sure. I was fixing a batch of cornbread. I had to do something to keep myself from thinking about what might happen. Oh, uh, if you can draw up that stool there, if you like. Oh, thanks. Uh, uh, before you sit down, uh, hand me them eggs, will you? Eggs? Oh, oh, sure. Here they are. Here they are. Well, now, the first sign of trouble was when Galt held up the Fargo station over at Fort Shafter. That was ten days, uh, maybe two weeks ago. Well, Shafter's 200 miles from Elk Point. Well, that's why folks didn't get too excited. Not then, anyhow. We never figured he'd come this far west. He never had before. Yeah, I guess that's all. Uh, <laughs> but last Monday, he was in White River. Oh, Robbed the White River First National. Got away with over $50,000. Mm. $50,000. Oh, 
dollars. Marshal Andrews, he's the district marshal over to White River. He trailed Galt five or six miles out of town, and then he lost him. But there wasn't no doubt which way Galt was fixing to go. Uh Oh, now where to put that pan? Oh, yes, here it is. Well, anyhow, just this morning, Ed Scott came barreling into town. He's got the old McBride Ranch out in Easter Canyon, you know. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Well, Ed's seen him last night riding through the canyon. He's a uh, god, huh? Couldn't have been nobody else. Ed recognized him right off, he did. He did. Uh, I, I thought you said god never been around El Point for. Well, there's pictures of him, ain't there? On them wanted posters? Mm, yeah, uh-huh. mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now I know I've left something out of this batter. If I could only think what... Oh, my star's bacon powder. Oh, you know, when you use sweet milk, you got to put in bacon powder, or the bread just don't raise up at all. Uh, uh, that cupboard right behind your bread, please. Right yeah, yeah, oh. That door there, right there. Oh, okay. There. And, yeah, it's on the second shelf. Little yeah. red can. Red can. That's the one. <laughs> well, now, like I say, Ed brung the news to town this morning. Mm-hmm. And that, that's when everybody took cover, huh? What else was we to do without a single able-bodied man to defend us? Oh. Eddie Scott rounded them all up, formed a posse, and went out hunting gold. Oh, now, what about Sheriff Henry? It sounds like that'd be his job, wouldn't it? Sheriff Henry ain't here. Oh, I see. Just when we need him most, he's delivering a prisoner over to county jail at Jackson. I see. And, of course, that gave Ed Scott his chance to take charge. He's always been the pushing type, wanting to run everything. I guess he figures if he can capture Galt, it'll be a real feather in his cap. Not to mention the $10,000 reward the White River First National is offering. Yeah, that's a lot of money. It sure is. 10000 Oh, can you open the oven for me? Oh, yeah, sure. Now, be careful, Britt. Now, don't you burn yourself. You better use that dish towel there on the rack. All right, all right, all right. I don't know why I bothered making cornbread. Won't be anybody here to eat it. Except maybe you, Britt. You'll stay for supper anyway, won't you, in spite of this Galt business? Well, it would take more than Stacy Galt to do me out of some of your cornbread. <laughs> Gee whiz, I'd ride 20 miles just to get a whiff of it. Oh, oh no, I would, yes, Britt. Well, my cooking's all right, but it ain't nothing exceptional. No, oh, you always was one to hand out the blood. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, uh-oh. my, you don't uh-oh. stop until have me some flustered. I won't know whether I'm coming or going. Yeah, I'll, I think I'll go out and put Scar in the barn. <laughs> well, you're welcome to feed him. There's plenty of hay. Thanks. Uh, 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 Ma. Yeah? Now, you, you weren't serious about there only being two of us for supper, weren't you? Well, I sure was. Well, but they used to have plenty of boarders, more than you could take care of. Oh, oh, I've still got my boarders, Britt. But they're all out with Ed Scott's posse. Oh, I see. I told you. There ain't a male between the ages of 10 and 60 left in town. Besides you, of course. Why, even old man Fletcher went along with that posse. No. <laughs> they had to help him onto his horse, but he went. <laughs> well, you better hurry now, Chris. I'll have supper on the table by the time you get back from the barn. <laughs> hey, it is quite a supper, too. Baked ham with brown sugar dripping down the sides, and mashed potatoes swimming in gravy, enough green lima beans to feed the whole population of Elk Point, and that cornbread, gee whiz, it just, just light yellow and fluffy with homemade maple syrup to pour over it, I tell you. I, when I started eating it, I figured I'd have a hard time making a dent in the plate Ma put before me, but the next thing I knew, I was asking for seconds. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, just a thin slice, Ma. No, 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 that's too much. That's too much. Oh, now, I'll only have to throw no, it away. No, just go easy on it. No, I don't know, though. I... There. A few more potatoes? No, I don't want any more potatoes. Ma. All right, Bridget. Just a few. No, I... Beans. No, I don't want any more now, beans. Now, you can't eat ham with nothing to go with it. No, I don't want any... Oh, goodness. Here you are. Well, uh, yeah. Gee, you, uh, well, how about you, Ma? You, you've hardly touched any of your food. Oh, what you cook yourself don't taste as good somehow. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're, you're not still worrying about Stacy Gall, are you? Oh, certainly am not. Not since you showed up. If he come into town now, you'd take care of him. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't imagine he'll get past Ed Scott's party. Ha! And you don't know Ed Scott very good. 
Why, he'll have that posse running around in circles. I'll bet you you could drive a herd of cattle right through the middle of them men, and they wouldn't even know... <gasps> oh. mm. You you want, want me to answer it? No, no, I'll, uh, I'll see who it is. Uh, you might keep your right hand free, though, just in case. Uh, who, who's there? Who, uh, oh, it's Seth Tooley. Yes. Seth. What are you doing back? You ain't caught Galt, have you? No, 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 we ain't caught him. Is Bit Ponce in town? My wife thought she'd seen him going into your place this afternoon. Yeah, he's here, but get out of the way. Oh, I gotta talk to Britt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's Seth. Britt, Britt, he's in Elk Point. Stacy Gulp is in Elk Point. No. Yes, he is. I saw him not five minutes ago riding over the South Creek Bridge. He means to rob my bank. I know he does. That's the only thing he could have come for. Well, you've got more than enough men to take care of him, haven't you, Sam? The posse's still out combing the hills, away out in the hills, yes. What? Well, my rheumatism started acting up. It was paining me something terrible. I had to drop out and come back alone. <laughs> that rheumatism of yours is sure a convenient sickness sometimes, Seth. Well, you can be mighty thankful for it tonight. Otherwise, Galt might have got by unnoticed. Oh, we got to move fast, Britt, before he reaches the bank. I brought him 44. I figured the two of us together get mm, it. Now, just uh, hold on, Seth. I, what makes you so sure the man you saw was Galt? Oh, it, it, it's got to be him. Fits his description to a T, to a T. Pretty dark out there, you he, know. He, he was on the trail from White River. There's no worse else could come from. Britt, we all know Galt was headed this way. What did I tell you? He got through Ed Scott's posse just like I said he would. Yeah, he might have at that. <laughs> It was a couple of times when we sort of lost our whereabouts. <laughs> well, come on, Britt. You ain't going to leave me to take care of Galt all alone, are you? Not not that I'd be afraid to try it, of course. All right, all right, Seth. I'm coming. I wasn't quite finished my supper, but I... <gasps> oh. 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 Well, now who on earth? Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Don't answer it, Ma. Why, that might be Stacy Galt. Oh. oh, now, why would Galt be coming here to Ma's place? Now... I'll see who it is. Well, I, I, I'll cover you, Brent. While you open the door, you ain't got a thing to worry about. I'll cover you. Honey. Sign out front says rooms. I'm looking for a place to stay. It's him. It's him, Ma. It's him. Well, uh, come on in. Uh, here, uh, this is Ma Batson. Uh, this is her rooming house. Uh, Evening, ma'am. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm full up. Oh? That's too bad. I was only going to be here one night. Any place else I might stop over? No, uh, that is uh, not, not that I know of. Well, uh, uh, before you go, mister. Yeah? Uh, we don't mean to be nosy or anything like that, but would, would you mind telling us what you're doing here in Elk Point? I got some business at the bank tomorrow. The bank? Oh. That's right. What are you doing with that gun, mister? What? Yeah, oh. Here, let me pick it up for you. No, 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 no. Hey, never mind. Just, just leave it there. Just just leave it. Laying on the floor? Yeah, well, <laughs> it ain't loaded anyway. A man's a fool to carry an unloaded gun. Say, uh, what time does the bank open up in the morning? Uh, it ain't open tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's a holiday. That's so? Funny, I didn't know. Well, it, it, it's kind of a special holiday, just here in Elk Point. Oh. Uh, you, uh, you came from White River, didn't you, mister? That's right. How did you... Oh, oh, you heard about me. I was on my way, huh? News sure travels fast, don't it? Yes, yes, it sure does. Well, if you haven't got a vacant room, I... You, uh, you sure you can't squeeze them in somewhere? Yes. You know, since some of your regulars won't be back tonight anyway, you, know, you could... How about it, Ma? Well, I... I, uh, I guess I could find a place for him, if, if you really think... I'd appreciate it, man. Uh, well, just uh, just follow me upstairs, and I'll, I'll see what I can do. Thanks, mister. No trouble. Well, what's the matter with you, Britt? Get Ma to let him stay here. Well, if he's Galt, well, this way we'll be able to keep an eye on him, don't you If think? he's... If he's... You've you seen that, that satchel he was carrying, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, don't you see? 
that's where he's got the stolen money. You can bet your bottom dollar on it. Mm-hmm. No. And, and Britt, you heard what he said about my bank. He was telling us plain as day that he means to rob it. That's the way Gold is. Everybody says so. You better stop that, Eden, and listen to me. He comes right out and announces what he aims to do. Don't make no bones about it. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. Well, well I, didn't, I didn't hear him mention anything about robbing you, Seth. You didn't, baby. How much plainer could he make it? Mm. Yeah, well. And you, Britt, I'm surprised at you. He was standing there wide open. Why, you could have outgod him without even half trying. Mm. Well, well, I guess either of us could have done that, Seth, seeing as how he wasn't wearing a gun. Keep up, 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 up. What? Pass me that cornbread, will you? We'll return to James Stewart as the six-shooter in just a moment. When it's entertainment you're after, you'll find the very best on this station of the NBC radio network. Thursday night, for example, Robert Young portrays Jim Anderson on Father Knows Best, a program which is based on the assumption that the man of the family can put one over on the wife and youngsters. The same night, you can enjoy the zany stunts on Truth or Consequences with Ralph Edwards. When Ralph sends a contestant off on a consequence, it usually ends up as one of radio's funniest. And if you like western songs and adventures, hear the Roy Rogers show. Then, to top it all off, hear the little-known stories of show business that Eddie Cantor tells on his show business show. Yes, Thursday is packed with stellar entertainment on the NBC Radio Network. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. Seth Tooley just stood there watching me finish up supper, and the expression on his face didn't help my digestion much. He sure did look disgusted. But I just wasn't convinced that this new fella and Stacy Galt were the same man. I'd never seen Galt before, of course, and... The fellow Ma took upstairs did look something like the wanted posters. And he had come from White River. That was all true, but no doubt. I, I, they, the poster pictures and the satchel and where a man comes from just don't prove he's an outlaw. At least not for certain. You gonna sit there eating all night? No, no. Quit, pounce it. No, no I, I'm done now. Well? Well, he's not robbing your back, Seth. Well, what do you want me to do? Wait till he tries it? No, now look. Now, we're not sheriffs or deputies, and we can't arrest somebody just on suspicion. And besides, I don't think he's Galt. Oh, you don't? Now, just don't stand to reason. Now, why would Galt come riding into town here? He knows everybody's on the lookout for him. Well, with that posse out in the hills, he's a lot safer here in town than he would be anywhere else. And don't think he don't know that, too. Well, (sighs) now, it's about time to turn in on it. Get that up. Bring it! Uh, uh, now, look, Seth, when, when Sheriff Henry comes back, he can arrest this fellow if he wants to. He, he's, uh, I think he's making a mistake. I, I think he'd be arresting the wrong man, but, well... Brent Ponson, I'll never forgive you for this. Not if I live to be 70. Uh, 90. No, no, no. Leaving me at the mercy of a killer. Why, we'd have been better off if you never showed up in Elk Point at all. This is terrible. Now, just take it easy, Ma. Take it easy? With Stacy Galt staying right under my own roof? Now, you could be jumping to conclusions, same as Seth here. Oh, am I? Do you know what's in that satchel? Nope. Money. Stacks and stacks of it. Oh, no, now, Ma. I now, watched Ma. him through the keyhole. He took it out and started counting it. And there's slips of paper fastened around the bills. And the printing on that paper says, White River First National Bank. There, you see. You you sure this, Ma? Well, I'm sure own eyes, ain't I? Mm, well... All right. I... And that ain't all he's got. You remember what it said on the wanted poster about, about how Galt always wears yellow leather gloves? Yes, I remember. Well, he's got the gloves, too. Right there in the satchel with the money. Ha! Ah, you satisfied now, Britt? 
Seth, Seth, you gotta find the posse and bring them back here as soon as you can. All right, Ma. You'll see that he don't get away, Britt. No, no. Yep, I'll see to it. For heaven's sake, Seth, hurry. Sure, Ma, sure. Gee, I'm I'm sorry if I got you into something, Ma, but I just can't believe... You can't believe what, Britt? Uh, nothing, Ma, nothing. Well, Ma cleared off the table and took the dishes out the kitchen. Well, I offered to dry, but she said she'd rather do them herself, so I went into the parlor to wait. The fellow upstairs was moving around and getting ready for bed. At least, that's what I hoped he was doing. His room was right over my head, and when the bed springs gave out a little creak, I felt a little better about things. About 20 minutes later, Ma came out and sat down in her rocker beside the fireplace. She was crocheting one of those doodads you put in the arm of a chair, you know. We didn't do much talking. Not for the next couple of hours, we didn't. And then about 11 o'clock, the posse came riding up. Well... Must be them, Ma. Oh, it's about time. Well? Uh, uh, maybe you'd better wait in the kitchen in case there's any trouble. Huh? There won't be no trouble now, thanks to Seth Foley. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, anyway, Oh, Mom. all right, Britt, all right. He, he's still here, Britt? Yeah, yeah, he's asleep, Ma. You know Britt Ponsett, don't you, Ed? Yeah, sure. Now, now, here's the plan. The rest of the boys have got the house surrounded. Whole house surrounded. Galt couldn't get out no matter what happened. Uh Uh-huh. All right, now. The three of us will go upstairs. Come on. Now, as soon as we get to his room, I'll kick the door open. Then we all blaze away at the bed. Now, 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 now. Just hold on here, man. Just hold on. Yeah? Well, what's the matter? Now, what you're talking about is cold-blooded murder. (laughs) Just giving him a dose of his own medicine, that's all. That's all? Yeah, yeah. Now, Ed... Now, don't you... tell me you still ain't satisfied that he's galt. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. That doesn't matter. He, he's entitled to a trial just like everybody else. Oh, use your head, Britt. If we try taking him alive, he's bound to get one or two of us first. Uh-huh. Well, that's the way we're going to take him, anyway. Now, Britt, Britt... Now, you just... wait here, both of you. I'll bring him down to you. And I want your word that he goes to jail in one piece, huh? Mm-hmm. I can't promise nothing like that. The boys outside are pretty mad about it. Maybe, maybe the boys would like to shoot it out with both Gall and me. Hmm? Brett, you don't. What do you say, that. Scott? Well, all right, Brett. He goes to jail, but so help me. Seth, how about it? Sure, Brett. Sure. But if anything happens to you, you got nobody but yourself to blame. Only yourself. Uh, upstairs hall was pitch dark. I moved on quiet. Quiet as I could. I tried to remember where the doors were. It's been a couple of years since I'd stayed at Benson's. I wasn't just sure which room. I pressed my ear against the door and listened. I couldn't hear anybody breathing inside, so I headed for the next door. Right there. Now, I had my hand on the knob when I hooked my leg on the hall table and I reached out to catch the He'd be awake now, so I had to move fast. I swung the door open and brought up my gun. Who's there? What do you want? Now stay where you are, and I don't reach for anything. What? Huh? What are you talking about? The lamp right beside his bed gave off enough light so I could see him. I leaned over and turned it up. He hadn't moved. He just sat there, eyes wide open, blinking. What's going on here, mister? I think you better put your clothes on. Oh, sure. Sure, whatever you say, but why? What's all this about? Well, there's some boys downstairs who want to talk to you. Talk to me? That's right. What? I don't know anybody in these parts. Uh, well, they know you. At least they think they do. Oh? Yeah, they, uh, they claim you're Stacy Galt. Galt? That's right. Why, they, they're crazy, plum crazy. They are? <laughs> Ain't they hurt? How could I be Galt? What do you mean? Galt's in jail, White River. He was captured, locked up the day before yesterday. You sure that? I ought to be. I captured him. You? The proof's right there in my satchel. Reward money. 
White hmm? River First National paid it to me yesterday. No. And Marshal Andrews gave me Galt's yellow gloves as a sort of memento of the occasion. Along with a letter of congratulations. Yeah. Uh, you see him? You, you, what, you, you, you captured Stacy Gough? Well, you? It, it was, was kind of accidental. You see, I, I, I'm a drummer. Travel around selling gadgets and things. I didn't know the cabin was Galt's hideout. Looked like any other cabin to me. Thought there might be some kids living there. So I was getting up my samples when the door opened. Guess he thought the six shooter I was holding was a real thing. Of course, it did look mighty genuine for an imitation. You sure make realistic looking toys these days. And he, he didn't try to shoot it out with you? No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. All he said was, okay, you got the drop on me. I didn't know what he was talking about, but I was too surprised to say so. Yeah. Next thing he handed me his gun, and, well, it was about then Marshal Andrews come riding up. Marshal was real nice about giving me all the credit. Want to see the letter he read? No, 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 no. But you bring that down along with you, will you? I, uh, what I want to see is Ed Scott's face when you show him that letter. That's what I want to see. <laughs> So when he got finished putting his clothes on, I took Amos, uh, Amos Foster, that was his name. I took him downstairs, and Ed and Seth, they were standing at the bottom, covering us with their guns. The letter from Marshal Andrews finally convinced them. They put their guns away and marched outside. And that was just about the unhappiest posse I ever saw, considering that they'd caught their man. Ma Benson, she came out of the kitchen in time to hear the tail end of Amos' explanation. She didn't say anything, just shook her head and then offered to make some coffee and heat up what was left of the cornbread. That sounded real good to Amos. It sounded good to me, too, except for one thing. I knew there wasn't any cornbread left to heat up. I, I sort of finished it off at supper. You know, defense is one job we can't put off. Because if we want security for our home and country tomorrow, we've got to do something about it today. How? By investing in United States savings bonds. You'll get a return of $4 for every $3 you put in, and in less than 10 years. In addition, you can hold your bonds beyond maturity and earn further interest. 3% interest compounded semi-annually for as long as 10 additional years. Sign up today for freedom. Join the payroll savings plan or the bond a month plan. You'll feel more secure tomorrow if you buy United States savings bonds today. The Six Shooter is an NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt, and the transcribed story is written by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture Thunder Bay. Others in the cast were Eleanor Audley, Barney Phillips, Forrest Lewis, and Seth Tooley was played by Parley Bear. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Hal Gibney speaking. Hear exciting stroke of fate tonight on the NBC Radio Network.